We can trust that it's the word of God because uh, as we have our memory text, 2 Timothy 3.16 says that the scripture is teopneustos, God breathed in. So somehow God has breathed that in. Somehow God was in the process of us getting that scripture. Okay, thank you, Audrey. Now, throughout the centuries, humanity came basically with three sources, how we know what we know. How do we know that what we know is true? Now, there was an ancient Greek philosopher. His name is Plato, who first came with the first source. And he said it's the reason. If you have seen my big fat Greek wedding, the father of the, of the bride says to his soon-to-be son-in-law, when you Americans have been chasing the buffaloes, we Greeks already had philosophers. <laughs> and so Plato says you can discover the truth if you think about it. If you think more than five minutes, you might discover something important. So reason is an important source of knowledge. Then came another clever guy, and this time an Englishman. His name is John Locke, and he said, experience is an important source of knowledge. Experience teaches you that the railroad tracks, which for you seem to merge on the horizon, actually don't. Experience can teach you very useful things. But then there is a third source. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, things which are secret belong to God, but things which are revealed belong to us and our children so that we can ponder them and study them and meditate on them. What is that? Certain things you don't discover from reason, certain things you don't discover from experience, for certain things you need revelation. 